Very good. Yes. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode hey. two of the Boob Tube. <laughs> Looks like we don't have anybody following yet, so we probably need to wait a few minutes. Okay, so, Helen, what's it like uh, back home? Back home in Oregon. So it's about 55 degrees today and uh, pretty much nonstop wind and rain. So <laughs> typical Oregon, typical Oregon spring. Well, you know, yeah. I, How I, don't about you? Mean, I don't mean to brag, but, you know, here in sunny, balmy Florida. Hey, Christy. It is uh, a nice um, uh, 85 degrees, sunny, warm, <laughs> lovely. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so I'm I jealous. Go ahead and probably get started. Um, so, hi everybody. I'm Toby, and I'm Helen, and we are the Milky, the Milky Mom. Mom. <laughs> this is our first time trying to do our boob tube, uh, not together. You know, doing right. it. Uh, what do we want to call this? Bi coastal. Bi coastal. Yeah, that's right. So um, this is not our second time doing um, the Milky's Mom's boob tube. Uh, we did one last month, which I think went really, really well. It was a uh, a great uh, live live post. It was talking about where and how do our breasts make breast milk, and I think we uh, we had lots of people that learned a lot of things and had fun at the same time. Would you say? I would say I think it was it was a lot of information, but I think it was really fun to kind of break down the mysteries of how we make milk and that whole process and just understanding our bodies a little bit better. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing that we are all about is that we're um, about sharing information to moms, empowering moms, um, maybe unveiling the mystery behind some things uh, that you know, really you know, we weren't born with this knowledge of <laughs> how to do all this stuff. There's no blueprint. There's no manual on uh, how to do some of these things. So that's what we're all about is sharing our experiences and sharing other moms' experiences mm -hmm. right now and getting them, uh, yeah. hey, in Texas, um, getting them to uh, share it and, and us all empower each other, right? That's right, because I think we all have pretty similar journeys, and I think sometimes we can feel kind of isolated and alone, but when we talk about kind of what we're all going through, it really helps just for us to feel supported and that we're not, we're not alone, that there's people that have very similar experiences, and the struggle that you're feeling, um, that's normal, and if someone else is, is listening to your story or you're listening to someone's story and you're able to relate and kind of see yourself in their experience, then I think that helps us feel more connected and just more more at peace with our own struggles. And I definitely feel, because I think moms, when they start breastfeeding, um, you know, they, they feel like they're all alone. And when they run into their struggles or they run into their, I like to call them speed bumps, right? We don't want to call them roadblocks. But when they run yeah. into those, they realize that, you know, um, they, they feel all alone. And we're all about definitely sharing that. So I think we have a lot of people on now. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Today. Hey, Chicago. Hey, Nebraska. Hey, Flinch. Yeah. I just have to give shout out. Okay. <laughs> shout out. Definitely. Definitely. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, how to be a successful pumper. And um, I know this is really a big deal for moms. This is kind of where moms, I think, start to struggle. Um, you know, they finally figure out the breastfeeding. They get it down. They feel accomplished. They feel like I got this all under control. And then we go back to work. And uh, yeah. this crazy sucking right. machine comes in. And, and definitely we have to learn how to figure that out. So that's right. what we're going to talk about today. Right, Helen? That's right. And we're really lucky to have Toby with us because she's she's what we call an extreme pumper. So Toby <laughs> has pumped silences, I think, like in a burning house or something like I, don't know. No, I did not. She had her fire hose. No, Toby. Toby's a firefighter paramedic. And I, I I think I saw a picture of her with her with her hands free pumping bra and she had a fire hose. 
And she was like spraying a burning house and um, <laughs> all the guys had like fallen behind because she had just like left them in the dust. So she was uh, pumping and putting out the fire and, and just, anyway, she's a super I mom. And remember an everybody, pumper. sometimes Helen like oh, makes a bigger story than what it is. But no, I am a yeah. firefighter paramedic and um, I did uh, pump a lot. Obviously I work 24 mm -hmm. shifts. So to go back to work, uh, to be able to breastfeed, obviously that was very important to me. And to be able to do that mm -hmm. pumping, unfortunately was the thing I had to do. And, um, yeah. you know, I was successful at it, but I kind of felt like it was always an uphill battle, right? Always mm -hmm. a struggle. Every week mm -hmm. I felt like I was treading water and um, am I pumping enough? That's the big question. Am I pumping enough? Oh my gosh, this looks like it's less, it's less, it's less. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're, you're not alone in feeling that because I bet you there's gonna be a lot of moms that share their experiences with pumping oh. and we're all gonna say the mm -hmm. same thing that you know, yeah. pumping is something you have to do, not have to, but I mean, if you're wanting to work and, and, and uh, be able to breastfeed, pumping is something you have to right. do. And none mm -hmm. of us love it <laughs> or enjoy it or have fun with it. <laughs> so yeah, so today we're gonna talk about some things about the pump. We're gonna talk about some pumps, uh, what kind of pumps we think are really good, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about the flange. And right are more than one kind of flanges. And uh, we're gonna talk about being prepared, being mm -hmm. um, uh, ready for breast milk supply to decline, right, Helen? And mm -hmm. then um, we're gonna talk about steps you can do to be ready, to be, uh, you know, instead of reactive, we talk about being proactive. Proactive, that's right, that's right. So for most moms, when you're heading back to work, you probably want to start pumping pretty early. So if you're lucky enough to have a solid 12 weeks, you probably want to start pumping and saving milk uh, as early as possible, really, even if it's, you know, week three or four, whenever you feel like you're able to kind of add pumping into your routine, it's good to go that day approaches. There's going to be so many other things to think about. And um, if you just start thinking about storing milk around those last few days before you go back to work, it's going to be another added stress for you. Definitely. And I think um, there's a little bit of, again, I'm all about being a rule breaker, um, not necessarily having to follow uh, pre, you know, set up rules. Um, uh -huh. I know there's a lot of information out there that says you shouldn't pump until certain time frames. And I like right. that you suggest that, Helen, that, you know, pump. When once you've kind of got a handle of breastfeeding and you know you're going back to work, so mm -hmm. if that's at two weeks for you, then you know start pumping. If that's at four weeks for you, that's okay. If it's at six weeks, that's okay too. So mm -hmm. you know, once you kind of got that feeling down that you've got this breastfeeding thing kind of under control and you've got it and you're doing you're grooving, cruising along, right? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. go ahead and start pumping because you do, like you said, you don't want to wait till those last couple days, because once you start doing that, then you're definitely going to uh, put a lot more stress on yourself than you need to. That's right. That's right. So it's good to start thinking just about even before you go on maternity leave, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to think about what's my plan for when I go back to work? Is there a place for me to pump? Is there a place for me to put my breast milk? Um, and just let your manager know um, if you have one that you're planning on pumping when you come back to work. And so that's another thing that you're not sitting at home on your maternity leave thinking about how is that going to work when I go back um, to my to my employer? Am I going to be able to have a place to pump? If you're lucky, you've had women that have kind of blazed the trail for you at your workplace that um, kind of got everybody uh, familiar with breastfeeding in your workplace, like Toby yeah, did in her in her fire station journey. That's definitely. I think that's. I think that's an important key. You know, I had to share that journey with a bunch of firemen who I, I don't think you can get more macho um, <laughs> firemen or police officers. And you know, uh -huh. uh, I was able to include them in my journey and um, educate without being this. You know, like beating them with it just educate and mm -hmm. share with them. And, um, 
you know, a lot of times they just want to know why are you doing something? And I don't think they want to know why, because they're, they're being rude. I think they're, they're trying to learn, but, mm -hmm. um, we need to talk about the pumps that are, mm -hmm. are out there for moms. Cause I think uh, there's a lot of pumps and, mm -hmm. um, a lot of good ones, but I think you should do your research. Uh, the pump right. I used was the Medela pump and style that worked really good for me. Um, but I know that there's a lot of other pumps out there that are really, really good. I mm -hmm. definitely think that the manual pumps are a little bit harder to to navigate than right. um, the pumps that are that are powered. So, do you have any type of uh, adding information to that for yourself, Helen? Yeah, I've used I've used a lot of different kinds of pumps with my first son. I didn't prepare. I didn't have a pump, and so I was engorged. I sent my husband to the Walmart, and he bought me just forty dollar you know, one-sided pump from the Walmart. I ended up using that throughout a couple of my kids actually. And when my first son kind of weaned himself at 10 months, I was exclusively pumping and my milk supply just spiraled down so quickly. And of course I blamed myself. I blamed my body. I blamed, you know, that I wasn't prioritizing pumping. And, um, you know, really, if I would have had a double-sided pump or a hospital grade pump, that might've made a big difference for me. And also, if I would have known a little bit more about hands-on pumping, which is a great, uh, really proven technique to increase um, the pumped milk that you're getting. And we'll talk more about that. And I'll even put a link to a video about hands-on pumping in the comments so right. that you can refer to that. I mean, scientifically shown to increase milk supply up to 100%. So very, very compelling, super easy to do, and also makes your pumping time so much more efficient. And of course, I had no clue about this, right? I mean, this is what oh, we do yeah. with our first. Hindsight is is twenty twenty, you know, and that's what that's what uh, the boob tube and us as Milky's moms are are trying to do is to get that information out there, get the right kind of information out there uh, for moms, and share other moms' experiences so that mm -hmm. you know moms are more prepared, you know, to to know later on that man, you know, maybe that hand pump wasn't necessarily the best choice. If you have choices, you know, going with the double pump is definitely going to increase your your chances of being successful in pumping, um, having a powered pump, having a good brand. Um, something that we were talking about is, are you someone who is easily distracted? Um, some pump pumps are louder than mm -hmm. other pumps. I know for me, my Medela pump and style was definitely loud. It was, wash on, wash on, wash on, wash on. <laughs> You know, I focused on this right. noise mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I end up having to use earbuds and I would listen to music mm -hmm. um, or a lot of times I would listen to an audio book to help drown out that noise. Um, but mm -hmm. there's actually pumps out on the market that are a lot more quiet. So if yeah. they cost about the same, you might want to look into something like that. Yeah, that's right. And just whatever you're doing, if it's working for you, stick with it. Um, we just had a comment about someone that loves manual pumps. If it's working for you, that's great. It's when you're kind of seeing issues with your milk supply that maybe you want to examine what other things that you can do. So for me, my one-sided pump that was electric, it did okay as long as I was breastfeeding also. But when I went to exclusively pumping, it couldn't really keep up with what I needed. And that's what the research shows us as well, that a double electric pump uh, supports a strong supply um, better than a manual and a um, any of the single-sided pumps. But right. you know what? Whatever pump you have, if it's working for you, hug it and kiss it and be thankful for it because um, because it's your best friend. And um, it's going to be a cool that yeah. you're going to need to be able to reach whatever goal. The other thing I think to be successful in uh, pumping is that, you know, we need to set um, more uh, smaller, more accomplished goals. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go back to work, you know, there's going to be a lot going on, you know, right. set a goal that's short term. You know, I want to be able to successfully pump for one month. We know what your long term goals are. Th that's fine. But Keep in mind, it's like dieting. You know, if I if I got to lose fifty pounds, it seems oh my gosh, you're so <laughs> you're not do that right. So so that's that's too much. So you know, I think to be a successful uh, pumper is that you need to set small goals in the beginning, so that when you accomplish those goals, you you feel elevated, you feel encouraged, you feel inspired. 
Um, so that's okay. one thing. Having a good, having the right kind of pump that works for you, having a good pump, um, I think is important. There's something about the flange. We've got to talk about the flange because I think this yes, is something flange. that definitely is, is not well known, I think, mm -hmm. to moms. And we need to talk about that. Okay. So I have a flange here. In case you don't know what a flange is, it's the part of the pump that actually connects to your breast. Looks so like a eyeball if you're standing right at it. <laughs> yes. That is an eyeball staring at you. Yes, yes. <laughs> so this is a flange. This is from a Hygieia pump. And Hygieia pump is another wonderful brand that's out there. Another choice for you, moms. And this is a standard size flange. This is what comes with your pump. But did you know that there are two other sizes as well? See, and so let's look at our sizing There's multiple gun. sizes that, you know, most of your pumps all come with a standard size. Somebody out there, I don't know, figured out that this is standard. And, you right. know, maybe that standard doesn't work for you. So let's talk about how do we know what size is it because if I'm a Obviously, you know, a little bit bigger <laughs> lady. Here. Toby is blessed. You know, I'm could, blessed. Yeah. Helen, so show us, uh, show us a little bit of interaction. Helen, um, different. Not, not too bad, but not too yeah. bad. And there's, we're all different sizes. So how does how does the standard one work, and how do we know if that's the one we need? So let me show you, this is our sizing guide and this is from Hygieia. We'll put this a link to this in the comments as well. But I wanna show you here where you measure to get your sizing for your pump. So you can see we wanna measure on the nipple and it's not the areola or the pink part, but actually the part of the nipple that protrudes is the measurement that we actually care about. It's okay. really the tip. It's you, the tip of the nipple that they're gonna measure. Mm -hmm. Almost like the the girth or the thickness of the nipple is what they're going to to measure. Not how far it comes out from the breast, but the the right. diameter of the nipple that they need to measure. So the medium one, the 27, right. that's the standard one that everybody mm -hmm. that pretty much all pumps send out, correct? Right. The 27 millimeter is you're going to be your standard size. Okay. And if you can see, I mean, that that's a pretty standard nipples, nipple uh, diameter right there. And then you can see we move into the other sizes. And so how do you know that you have the right size flange? Yeah, that's okay. no. So, <laughs> so pumping shouldn't uh, give you redness on your nipple. It shouldn't cause you pain and kind of rubbing. If it does, that means your flange is probably. So um, you want to be sure that your nipple is centered and moves freely in your flange. So you've got your flange here. And. Your nipple, of course, is going to fit right here into this opening, and you want your nipple to move freely in and out of here as your pump is sucking, as this pump is having its suction cycle. And you can tell if it, if your nipple was too big, it would kind of stop right here, right? It wouldn't go all the way in. It would just kind of jam up this place right here. And now if I have a flange on there that's that's too large, then my nipple is going to get too much into this channel right here. My nipple plus some areola is gonna get into my channel here and um, I'm probably not emptying my breast. This is gonna be funny that this that I'm gonna say this because I have large boobs but little nipple diameters. <laughs> so I got, I'm, the, I'm the, the weird, you know, I'm the little nipple, big booby kind of girl because that was something that, <laughs> That was I love it. that I had in my standard, not knowing that there was multiple choices of um, of flanges, that I had, you know, the too big of one. And my nipple really went a lot into the, the flange. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. something where I wasn't really getting as much suction as I probably should. And I wasn't emptying my breast as much as I could. So that's probably why my journey, even though it was successful, really felt like it was this uphill, uphill battle. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Again, we have our hindsight, right? Our hindsight, hindsight. when we could have. That's what, that's what you know, made things all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to show you, this is the correct fit right here. So this is kind of what your nipple should look like. And you can see that your nipple is going into the channel, but right. pretty much that's right. all that's going in. You're not having any of the areolar tissue going in and um, the milk is able to empty freely from, from the, the end of your nipple. So if your nipple looks like that in your flange, then that's great. Um, you shouldn't have pain, you shouldn't have rubbing. And, um, you know, if you feel so, like your breasts aren't being emptied all the way and you're having pain, check out, check out your flange size. Yeah. Show the other two. Um, the one that's too small okay. as a good example, okay. and then show the one that's too big. So obviously so this one, really having a hard time even getting yeah. into the opening. Right. So in this one, our flange is too small and you can see how the nipple is kind of stuck on the outside. OK, and we're probably having a lot of rubbing here, a lot of discomfort. Right. So our moms right. that are saying, yikes, my nipple is rubbing and there's, you know, and there's the a lot of discomfort. My nipples are red. Yeah. Um, you might look at your flange size. OK, okay. and now we'll look what at the one. Me? I had too big of a flange. Mm hmm. And the nipple and so here's our deformed as it went into the pump. That was definitely something that stressed me out when I was watching that. I was yep. thinking, oh, my God. Oh my gosh, is this going to, oh, uh, you know, it was definitely something that, so I think that, I think this is a big thing for moms to notice is that, you know, you need to know what kind of flange you have and do you have the right one? Because, you know, we are all different. We are all different, right. different shapes, different sizes, different types of nipples. And there, mm -hmm. a standard one is probably going to only work for a, a certain percentage. And I don't think in right. today's day that that's going to be the right percentage. I think it's going to be more the smaller percentage. And um, so you have the ability to get a different size flange online for wherever that you got your breast pump. Okay. That's right. If you need help in measuring your nipple, um, mm -hmm. you can always, uh, I kind of made some phone calls. I called uh, Babies R Us. Um, mm -hmm. and I definitely had somebody who was very familiar with pumps and the flanges and the different diameters. Um, okay. but they're not always, you know, they're there a lot, but not all the time. It also depends on where you, where, where's your babies are us, you know, is it one that's going to have someone there all the time or maybe not? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. some of the other big stores, you know, the targets and the Walmarts, I definitely didn't find anyone that knew at all what I was talking about. So <laughs> that's land where? is that like an auto part? I'm not sure. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to send me to the wrong spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a good resource for you. Uh, but definitely, you know, if you have a local lactation consultant, they're going to be the ones that are going to know how to do all that and, and measure and show you kind of how to do that. Um, if you go right. to our this flange sizing guide, I'll put it um, in the comments on our video as well. So if you want to refer back to it, it's definitely going to be. Okay. And, and all the different, um, you know, the different brands are all going to have sizing guides. So that's definitely going to be okay. something available to you. So, okay. So we've talked about the fact that you need to get the right kind of pump, um, which is right. not just one answer, right? We've talked about getting a quieter mm -hmm. pump. We've talked about um, the flange, which I think is really, really important. Um, let's talk about right. successful pumping. How often do you pump? Yes. Um, I'm How gonna often? say you got to pump a lot. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. you don't have stimulus. You don't have the baby mm -hmm. around here telling you, um, how to do, you know, letting you know, Hey, I'm hungry. Fill me up. You don't have that stimulus. So you're going to have to be more proactive with that. You're going to at least pump eight times a day, preferably mm -hmm. 10 times a day mm -hmm. if you can. Now I did um, right. some studies. Again, this is not something that I knew at the time, uh, but hindsight's twenty twenty. So we're trying to share it here on mm -hmm. on uh, the boob tube. But um, a lot of times it says instead of setting alarm clock to wake you wake you up at night, uh, it's mm -hmm. better to wake up on your own. Either to go to the bathroom, uh, which we know you know we, we have that experience a lot, um, or, <laughs> you know, and then try to pump in. Or if your breasts feel full or you feel uncomfortable and you wake up that's a better time to pump. Um, but if you mm -hmm. need to set an alarm clock, again, you know, you can do that. But a better way to do that is the is is waking up naturally yourself to have to pump. 
if you're doing that. That's right. Right. Yes. Um, another successful thing I think to do in pumping is, uh, and you mentioned this before, Helen, is is pumping and breastfeeding. If you can do both. Uh, with mm -hmm. my first daughter, I exclusively breastfed for the first three months, and then I exclusively mm -hmm. pumped. Um, I was successful with pumping about uh, five months, maybe six, mm -hmm. uh, when I was back to work. And, you know, that wasn't the year I wanted, but I was happy with my success. But it was definitely a lot harder exclusively pumping. Um, with my yeah. second daughter, I tried to change it up. So I did both. I pumped at work. And I breastfed. Mm -hmm. And I found out mm -hmm. that definitely uh, breastfeeding along with pumping makes you more successful in your in your pumping journey. I think so too. And that's what the data shows is that a baby empties the breast better than a pump. And so that when you come home from work, try to breastfeed on your days off. If you're a traditional kind of a nine to five Monday through Friday, on the weekends, put your pump away and and just spend the days with your baby and, and just breastfeed on demand. That's great. Now that you had mentioned um, uh, trying to do something to help pumping be more successful, uh, we did mm -hmm. talk about this in the last time that we did our uh, boob tube. I think it's important to talk yes. about it again because we need to make each pumping uh, more successful. Pumping doesn't always completely empty the breast, right? So we need to do that. Let's talk about that. Bye. So that's right. You're exactly right. So a pump can't do the job on its own. So a lot of us, we, you know, we want to do other things with our hands while we're pumping. Well, actually, we need to use our hands when we're pumping. That's the best way to get as much milk out of the breast as you can. And I'm going to put on a link to a great video. Um, it's from Stanford University. It's called Hands-On Pumping. But just like in every boob tube video, we're going to touch ourselves now. <laughs> so. Basically, what you're going to do is have a hands-free pumping bra, and then you're just going to use your hands, and you're going to move the milk out of the breast. So you're going to help your help your pump essentially do its job, and we're going to use pressure to do that. So, All right, moms, if you're watching, I want us to not be doing this by ourselves. I want you guys to be doing it with us. One, two, That's three, awesome. everybody. Woo! Everybody, that's right. I'm out in my front yard doing this. My neighbors are hearing me say, let's touch our breasts. <laughs> rest in here in five seconds. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll vouch for you. I'll vouch for you. Yeah. yeah. You're in the wrong state to do that. But yeah, <laughs> no. that's something that moms need to know. This is a good thing to know that you're going to make, <laughs> I'm doing a way to go, Corinne. Um, <laughs> that you're making your, your pumping sessions uh, more mm -hmm. successful because we learned about in the last session, we learned about receptors that are in the breast and that those receptors are a go or no go. And you need to go back and look at that because we're not going to get really that far into that one. But, uh, you know, this hands on a pumping along with everything is going to help those receptors, you know, be in the go, not the no go. Yeah, and that's what we want. Be in the green light in to green. make more milk. Yes. In the green. And Hands-on pumping helps you get done with pumping faster because who likes pumping? Raise your hand. No, nope, yeah, not me. No, no, I'm not raising my hand. No one's <laughs> raising their hand. No one's raising. Their hand. No um, one's raising. So, okay, I have another. I have another question on successful pumping. Um, yeah. uh, a lot of moms, you know, the whole thing about pumping is that you don't have that. Oh, you know my baby, and this is wonderful, yeah. and I'm touchy feely and fluffy all inside, right? Instead, you mm -hmm. have this very like uh, kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So we need to distract ourselves, moms. So, and yeah. myself included, as well as a bunch of moms that I've talked to, they've all told me different places that they have pumped that they were a lot more successful with. I've had moms mm -hmm. that have been online searching while they're pumping so that they're ignoring this whole process going on here. Maybe they're right. reading a book, maybe they're watching TV, maybe they're shopping online. There's a mm -hmm. whole different, so if you're finding that you're struggling where you're pumping, maybe mm -hmm. change it up. And I want you moms that are, that, are, that are watching today, I want you guys to maybe comment where you guys got the most milk when you pumped. Right. You know, what were you doing that would what get you the most milk? 
The research shows exactly that you're right, Toby, that women that listen to music, that women that look at pictures of their babies, that women that don't just sit there and stare at their breasts <laughs> and wonder well, how much longer well, and am I going to make any milk, um, they do actually more. more milk. So it's okay to be distracted. Um, if you use hands-on pumping, that's a great way to kind of distract yourself because you're you're concentrating on what you're doing and i saw a question about how much pressure and just keep the pressure firm um you'll kind of get to know yourself and how much you have to push um but it's not anything that's going to be painful it's just while you're um putting that pressure on your breast and you'll feel when your milk ducts are empty because you know our breasts sometimes they feel kind of lumpy when we have milk in them and then when the ducts are empty a lot of times those lumps are all gone so that's when your breasts are going to feel a lot softer and really empty and not so lumpy anymore right so so i'm going to yeah. share where i was most successful okay with, um, she has, let's give her immunity right now we need to everybody agree okay let's yes see. yes so I'm not suggesting that moms do what I did with pumping as far as where I, I pumped most successfully. Um, I definitely did pretty good when I would uh, listen to music or an audiobook. But my most successful pumping was when I would drive to work in my car. So I yeah. would have my at the time I didn't have a, a hands free bra because I just didn't do that. So um, I would hold on to my pump on the one side. I'd be driving mm -hmm. to work and I would yeah. have to stick shift into gear. And sometimes I would mm -hmm. even answer the phone and be doing all of that, but I would be which so is legal, Which is legal in Florida. Well, just completely illegal. Legal. The whole thing was illegal. But um, <laughs> I would be completely distracted with everything that I had to do besides here that all of a mm -hmm. sudden I would get four ounces or almost four ounces mm -hmm. out of each breast. Now, to explain my journey with that is that I usually got anywhere between one to two ounces every time I pumped. I was never this mega producer. Mm -hmm. um, that's why yeah. I always felt like every week, oh my gosh, tread water, tread water, tread water, tread water. Oh my gosh, tread water, tread water. Um, so again, I'm not suggesting that women do that. I'm just sharing the funny experience that I had in that, you know, I'm a little crazy and I would do that. And uh, it definitely goes to show that if you're distracted, if you have something else going on, you mm -hmm. can produce more milk. So if you're pumping, whatever it is that you're doing and you're, you're noticing that you're not getting a lot, then try to mm -hmm. change it up. Do something different. Distract yourself right. in a different way would be my mm -hmm. suggestion with that. Yeah. I think that's a great suggestion. It's great to look at what other moms do and how they kind of distract themselves too because um, sometimes you need some new ideas. So... Yeah. I mean, we're, we're that. that's what we're all about is sharing our experiences and, you know, yeah. what another mom was successful with, you know, obviously not driving and risking your life, but you know, <laughs> what other moms were successful with, you know, might be something that would help, help you get out and, and do. Um, that's right. Okay. So the other thing I want to talk about, cause I'm all about being very prepared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we all need to live in the reality of mm -hmm. when you go back to work, your breast milk supply is going to, to drop down a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's not like not live in reality. That's reality. Okay. How are we going to overcome that? So for me, you know, working for the fire department, we always talk about being prepared, you know, being not reactive, being proactive. So for mm -hmm. me, I was proactive in my breast milk supply and the possible definite declining. I took fenugreek. So that was something that worked for me in trying to maybe balance out that uh, decline and uh, something that I would definitely recommend for a lot of moms to do is to take um, fenugreek prior to maybe going back to work or right as you go back to work. Let's start doing it instead of waiting until your supply drops and then mm -hmm. you do that. Right. And it's tough. Heading back to work is it's just more demands on your time. There's going to be more pumping and less time that you're with your baby. Yeah, and the best, yeah. And it's, it's very important that when you start back to work, your milk supply is strong. That's the best way to kind of keep over, you know, keep going over that bump that you're going to have when you head back to work is to be sure that you're starting out strong. It's a little hard to keep chasing that milk supply 
And it sounds like you did that, Toby. And, you know, I, I, you're a trooper. I, I, I did. I chased, even though I had the fenugreek, I, I did chase it. And something that I wanted to, you know, mention us being Milky's moms, um, one of the things, and people might know, like, what, why are you guys called the Milky's moms? Well, because, you know, we are mom inventors of breastfeeding products. Mm-hmm. And we mm-hmm. also um, are part of a collective line called um, the, the Milky's products, the Milky's line of breastfeeding products that are created uh, by breastfeeding moms for right. breastfeeding moms. And um, right. they've got some great uh, products that help increase breast milk supply. They've got fenugreek, but there's something better about their fenugreek than the, the standard fenugreek that's out there. <laughs> Bless you. Yes, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> it's the cold. So, so yes, I have to take great. like a gazillion pills to achieve what I needed to with my fenugreek. But I know the Milkies has a, a better option for their fenugreek. That's right. It has a, a concentrated uh, fenugreek and then a fenugreek powder, a fenugreek seed powder as well. And the combination of those two ingredients make the pills very effective. They're um, caplets that have the fenugreek inside. Right. And they make them very effective and you have to take fewer of them. I mean, who likes to take a big handful of pills? Nobody. No, but when you're I think that's about, important. Yes. Yeah. When you're talking about milk supply, you're kind of thinking, what can I do? And you've done, you know, you've increased your breastfeeding sessions. You've increased your pumping sessions. You've kind of covered all those bases and you're looking for um, and another thing to do. And the fenugreek is a great place to start. That's where your lactation consultant is going to send you first is right to fenugreek. And there's a reason why, because it's been you know, tried and true, it's the herb that increases supply. And it worked for you, Toby, I know. It did. And uh, I think we should put a link um, for um, the, the Milky's products. Um, mm-hmm. And they're, they're fenugreek through um, the Milky's line. Another thing yep. that they, they have also is um, the nursing blend, which is a, a combination of the fenugreek along with um, good vitamins and nutrients for making your breast milk a lot more... Um, nutritious, high vitamin C's, vitamin D's, things like that. So that's another option for moms. But if mm-hmm. you don't like taking pills, I think um, I tried to do the tea. Uh, originally, mm-hmm. that uh, there's some teas on the market. And I think a lot of things that moms don't know, and this is what I want to share, is that a lot of teas on the market, because there is um, fennel seed in there, it mm-hmm. has a strong black licorice taste. Um I can share my experience. I do not like black licorice. I don't know about you, Helen. Do you like black licorice? No, not a fan. No. Okay. And the thing with that is that really if you pull like, let's say 10 women, eight of them are going to say, I do not like black licorice. Okay. So the tea that's mainly on the market is very black licorice tasting. And a lot of, you got to drink it three or four times a day. So if you hate the taste, a lot of moms are not going to to drink it. But the Milky's line has added a tea that I think is really, really great. Uh, we're going to definitely put up a Facebook Live coupon code for everyone who's been watching the show and who continue to watch the show as it replays, that you can go on and get some discounts about that, uh, about our products. But they have a great tea that's on the market also that is a lot lighter. They've added lemon verbena. Mm-hmm. And it makes the tea light, and it still does all the great things um, that the fenugreek pills do if you didn't want to take the pills. Another option. I'm all about options, choices. choices. Yeah, we got to have the choices. And I just put the coupon code for um, fairhavenhealth.com, and that's where you'll find the fenugreek and uh, the, the nursing time tea, which we talked about. Right. And there's another product as well called Nursing Blend, which yes. is also a wonderful Milky's product, and that is all the nutritional support uh, that you're going to need when you're breastfeeding. Plus it has fenugreek. So it's kind of a, a one-stop shop for everything one-stop, that you need. One-stop shop. Yeah. One-stop shop. One-stop shop. So you know, yes, um, you can use that coupon code for it as well. Yeah. coupon. Code. And you know, we, uh, we can, those products are on our website at mymilkies.com, mm-hmm. which I think is great. And um, mm-hmm. this has really been a great, um, I think sharing about how to unveil the mysteries of pumping, being prepared, um, knowing mm-hmm. that you've got to get uh, the right kind of pump. Um, the yep. flange is so flange important. Needs to fit. Flange. Right. And um, all that you've got different options that you want to be, you know, you want to start maybe pumping sooner than later. 
um, okay. that you want to, uh, you know, be be prepared on maybe taking some supplements if you need to to counteract that that breast milk supply that's declining. That you need to pump a lot, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of times, and you right. want to hand express, right? Yep, you want to use your hands. And I want to address. There's this quick little comment about. They give, the babies, give your baby gas when the mom's taking it. And that's why um, if you're if your baby does have stomach issues from fenugreek, that you go to a non-fenugreek um, supplement for your milk supply, like the nursing time tea. Oh, so yeah. That's a great oh, yeah. question. That's a great thing that you said, because there's no there's no fenugreek in the nursing time tea. There's no there's fenugreek other, in the tea. Right. Mm-hmm. There's 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 other um, herbs that have been known to help increase breast milk supply. So it's a great here, that's what we're all about, right? Choices. And these are two choices uh, for moms to, to do, which I think is great. Um, yeah. So I really feel like we've got moms kind of prepared. If you know, um, that's what we're all about here, right? Is sharing our stories, um, educating, yeah. and uh, having right. a good time. Yes. And I will post the link to the hands on pumping video. You guys love it, watch it, share uh-huh. it. Share it. We, this is so important. It's such a great thing that you can do that that increases your supply. That's pretty easy. Um, if you have a hands-free pumping bra, great. If you say, hey, I don't want to spend the money on that, go on Pinterest and find ways to make your own hands-free pumping bra at home. Okay. So um, there's, and, and, you know, you know there's tons of our other video. Go watch our other video that actually talks about how the breast makes breast milk. And the combination of that video and this video, um, and we hope, you know, more videos that are going to come, is that we're doing, you know, we're helping moms. We're everything about breastfeeding, everything about the boobs. That's why it's called the <laughs> And we're helping moms to reach whatever breastfeeding goals that they're, that they're wanting. And that's what we're all about. That's what we're all about. So thank you so much for watching and um, we'll see you next time. Yes, and we're gonna go back and do a um, comment on all the comments that were coming in. So thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I think you have to unlive. <laughs> <laughs>